Well, welcome to Alan's Day. Uh, it is that time of year again when we got to start putting shoes on uh, shoes and pads on horses uh, for our trip to uh, Tennessee. Uh, every year we go down there uh, for a couple of weeks and uh, it's pretty rocky train down there so put shoes and pads on them. Uh, we're taking four of them down there this year so I got a couple of them done working on uh, Stetson. We've got uh, and it's getting dark out there now. I better hurry up here. You can see the uh, the moon is just peeking through. I don't know if you can see it through the trees over there. But uh, got uh, Buckshot out there. And you have met uh, Stetson. Uh, that's uh, one of Jean's horses, my wife's. And as you can see, I have already have... Uh, I got the front shoes, two front shoes on, and I've got uh, one back shoe on there. I've got to put that uh, back shoe on over there, and I'll uh, just show you what I do on that. So this is not a how-to video. This is how does video, and this is how I does it, uh, putting shoes on here. So there's so many ways and different ways of uh, shoeing and techniques. Uh, please don't send any comments on how you do it. Um, it might work good for you, but this is what works good for me. And then we've got uh, Lux, and you can't see, uh, hardly see Zara over there, but that's another one of Jean's. So I've got to finish putting shoes on, uh, on Lux. That's my uh, tomorrow night's project. But let's get back to Stetson over here. Now I do have I already trimmed up his back foot there. Like I said, I got the other three shoes on already. Um, and come on, over, over, over. Good boy. So, here, come on, slide your boat over just a little bit more. There you go. Just got to get him squared up here a little bit so he stands. Now, what I've got going on over here is get you uh, set up here with uh, the camera so so I've got him uh, I got him trimmed up already uh, so I trimmed up his foot uh, cleaned it all up uh, now what I do on there is I take this blue coat spray it is a nasty mess but it's uh, germicidal and fungicidal. And once you put a pad over the top of this foot, and I'll show you what a pad is, uh, they get pretty slimy underneath there. And that's where you get, uh, you get problems with all that uh, bacteria and growth in there. So what I do is, you gotta take and hold your breath and just spray the bottom up with the blue coat on there and that'll soak into all those open pores after you got done trimming and rasping uh, something's got to go in those open pores and I'd prefer to uh, dictate what goes in those open pores and that's going to be that uh, blue coat uh, it's going to soak in on the bottom of the foot so uh, while that's drying I'll put the foot down and we will walk over and I will show you the uh, shoes and pads and lucky for me tonight I've got his uh, shoes from uh, last year that I pulled them off and they're already built up and they got pads and they got enough for one more run worth on there so what I got to do on here is just uh, prep this uh, prep this shoe here a little bit just take the old nails out and you can reuse these pads and shoes. You can get a couple of resets out of them. It depends how much you, uh, you use the horse. And I'll show you something that's also going to help uh, 
save the longevity of the shoe and I do that on most horses there so well, we got the pad the shoes up the nails almost out those are all clean I got my garbage can down underneath here as you can see uh, I'm behind on my house cleaning it's uh it's getting a little messy in here so I uh, just take and uh, I've got them riveted on there with a copper rivet that'll hold the pad in place so, It is all ready to go on. That just saved me all kinds of time uh, with the shoes on there. So we will uh, get that shoe put on there. And he turned his butt around. Let me get him spun around the other direction here. And I'll uh, show you a little about the nails and what I do on here. So. so what I got going on on my cart here. There again, looks like I need to do a little house cleaning. It's getting... Uh, little little messy at times here but like I was telling you what I do to prolong the life of these shoes and also give the horses uh, traction on the rocks that we're going to go over I use these uh, carbide traction nails uh, it takes a lot to wear them down and it definitely extends the life of the shoes and what that nail is it is has a piece of carbide uh, welded to the top of these. Uh, these I put these nails almost on every horse that I do. I put these nails on there. They're a little pricey. I think they're about 75 cents a piece for the nails. Uh, 50 or 75 cents. I forgot what it is. But you can see uh, how they dig into the uh, just even in the concrete here you can see that that mark that little skid mark there uh, right there that's every time they step down they got just a little traction so they're not uh, sliding around so I've got uh, carbide nails for the uh, two I just do those on the two toenails here and I'm just loading up my my magnet on my apron here so I've got those now I got some options with the rest of the nails I'm putting on there. Uh, there's so many choices and what I use on the smaller shoes, I use this as an SB5 uh, nail on here. And that's uh, SB is for uh, slim blade and that is what the uh, nail looks like. Now it's very critical that when you put these nails in you get this you can see right up on the top here that there's a uh, knurled part right here that needs to go to the ins towards the inside of the foot reason being is when you drive these in that nail is designed at a taper it's designed so when it goes in it it goes out if you put the nail in the wrong direction that nail would go into the horse's foot and uh, that's not gonna be a good day so on the smaller shoes I use the uh, CH5s uh, once I get up to a number one and above or a number two and above I use the CH5 it's a thicker thicker bigger nail um, but it distorts more of the hoof wall that's why I try using these skinny ones here so that they don't distort the hoof wall as much and then this is what I use once I start putting pads on is the CH uh, 5XL so it's an extra long one because you start developing some thickness when you uh, put the pads in here and I'll show you later on on the next one uh, actually building a shoe and uh, putting the putting the pads on there but for now let's just uh, get loaded up with some uh, SB 5s and let's get this uh, get this shoe on here so uh, one other thing that I do on here is um, underneath the shoe and I'll show you that is we need some packing to put under there because otherwise if you don't put anything underneath the pad um, you're gonna get that full of dirt and uh, crap under there so this is a hoof packing uh, that goes 
underneath the shoe and next to the foot. And what this will do, <coughs> it'll uh, help keep some of that uh, bacteria and slime from growing underneath there. So, well, let me get set up and I'll uh, start putting the shoe on. Get some hoof packing in here. And what I do is I've got a little putty knife here and I put some packing in there just smear it way down in there like I said because if uh, you don't have something in there uh, it's going to fill up with uh, dirt and crap and I'd prefer to have something in there that's beneficial on that bottom of that uh, bottom of that foot so just put some hoof packing in there um, and then got the shoe and that just gets dropped on here and this was already fit from his last year and everything pretty much stays the same and I get the bulbs lined up on here so that so as you can see this from the back here that the back of the shoe is lined up with the uh, with the bulbs here so these are the bulbs of the foot I just make this shoe so it's about 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch from the back side of the shoe uh, to the bulb here just to give them a little bit of support well let me uh, start putting some nails in here and these nails they don't uh, they don't hurt them uh, provided that you put them in the uh, correct location um, and I start out with these carbide nails like I said right at the uh, right at the toe and drop that in here so I hold my two fingers right here and I put my this finger right here behind the on the bottom side so I sort of judge where that nail is ending up and uh, I get that set in there and get the other one set here just to hold in place double check my fit that everything is fit all the way around the perimeter of the uh, of the shoe here um, and then just got to be real careful that to you make sure that the nail is uh, going the right direction and it's uh, and it's popping out the back side here and then I just simply knock that over and these carbide nails they drive in they're somewhat of a challenge to get them in there because they they don't drive in straight and you got to do a little bit of playing around with them to get them to go in there and they do beat your hammer up so if you've got a old hammer uh, that's what you need to do so so I've got uh, my first two nails in there and let's see what do I need got uh, I got my other nails I just keep pulling them off of my uh, my magnet here and driving them in there and making sure that they're pointing the right direction and you can hear when you're hitting it and I just tap it in slow until I know that it's going in the correct direction um, and then you can sort of feel it when it or hear it and feel it when it hits the uh, hoof wall and then if you give it a good smack you can get that nail to pop out the side of the side of the foot a little bit maybe I can get you down here and show you that nail going out of that side here and they like to
Well, I've got all the nails in. Now what I do is I just set the nail. I've got this nail set. I just hold it underneath each nail and just give it a little hit just to set that nail in place there. And Stetson's getting a little rambunctious here, so he's he's moving around a little bit. And oh, where are you going, Stets? He says it's uh, he says he's getting tired of this. Me too. Um, yeah, I could probably do a better job getting set up and uh, mounting cameras and camera angles and everything like that. But I guess you guys are going to get what you get on this one here. So you can see that we got the nails all pounded in and they're all folded over. So the next thing is I have to uh, clinch those nails. So you can see that uh, the pad is right here and then you can see the shoe and uh, he's got plenty of support in the back that's critical to get that shoe backed up um, far here. So he's got the other one there. He's uh, sort of resting his foot. So what I'm gonna do next is cut these nails off rasp it and clinch them over and uh, we'll have Stetson done here. I will uh, show you the next step on how I uh, set that up or as best as I can here. So, Well uh, that one I use a different stand. I use uh, this stand right here and I just take and pull their foot up, set their foot on the stand, take another pair, different tool, it's just a pile of tools in here. Uh, I'm not going to get too in detail to all and what they're for because a lot of this stuff, um, it, uh, it, takes a, it takes a little while to get the full understanding of what tools you need and the job here. I've been doing this trimming feet uh, for probably uh, at least uh, 45 years. I've been trimming feet or longer and uh, been putting shoes on for about the last uh, 20 some years I've been been shoeing. Uh, partly out of necessity. The reason being it's just that's pretty damned expensive when you've got to start uh, putting shoes on a horse. And I figured it's one of those things that if the farrier can do it, I could do it. So, yeah, so I, so I just started getting equipment and uh, getting myself sort of self educated on, uh, on shoeing here. So I cut the nails off. I just ran the rasp underneath them just to clean that up. And now I gotta clinch it. Oh, put your foot up there. That's these guys right here. This end rolls over and it just sort of folds the end of that nail over so that uh, it doesn't come off of there. And if everything is, as luck is on your side, that's mostly what it is, uh, we're gonna get that shoe to stay on there for uh, 8, 10, 12 weeks and He'll be good to go. So I've crunched them over. Uh, just take the file, knock some of the high spots off. And Stetson is officially done um, with his with the shoes on there. So he is good to go up into the mountains and uh, and play. I don't know if it's playing for him, but it's more playing for us to go take these guys up into the up into the hills and uh, do some trail riding with them. So he's all set. Thank you for uh, sticking along with me on this adventure of how Alan does it, uh, putting shoes on there. Uh, talk to you later. I'll show you how I build a shoe on the next episode. Thank you.
Thank you for watching Alan's Day. Life is about making choices. Some things are already perfect. Some things you may choose to upgrade. This channel will show you both. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks again.